Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alva, back once again after the upteen thousandth sickness, and today I thought we would discuss Ubisoft and their recent pricing structure for Star Wars Outlaws. Now, for those of you that follow me, there has been some buzz on social media in recent days surrounding Ubisoft and the suspected use of bots for engagement farming as a means of advertisement, but we're going to save that for a separate video as that requires a bit more context and discussion, and as I'm very new to some of the aspects involved in that, I've been going through a bit of a learning curve thanks to Shino and Upper Echelon. But yeah, pricing and what it entails. Of course, Ubisoft has been seeing a lot of criticism in recent days surrounding the drop of the story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws that includes ongoing frustration with the uglification of female characters. And then of course, there's the botting on social media, but like I said today, we're focusing on pricing. So first, for Star Wars Outlaws, for Ubisoft, we have the Standard Edition, which naturally is the base game. Which, buyer beware whenever the term base game is used, and the reason for that will become apparent in a moment. It also has the pre-order bonus, which is a cosmetic pack for your speeder and a cosmetic for the Trailblazer Starship. What those cosmetics look like, well, we don't know and you likely won't know until the game launches. It's just cosmetics to generate a small perception of value for garnering a pre-order of the game, but cosmetic packs usually run the price of about $5, which is a discounted $0 add-in. So for pre-ordering, you get 5 bucks worth of free cosmetics-only content. Next, we have the Gold Edition, which is a full $40 more than the base game. That's US dollars, I mean. That is the minimum necessary for the quote-unquote three days early access, a common marketing trick that is based purely entirely on FOMO or fear of missing out. But this practice has become so very common these days that the August 30th release date should be more properly stated as the game will launch on August 27th, but the people that do not purchase a premium edition of the game are penalized by being forced to not be able to play the game for 72 hours. In addition, this single-player game has a season pass, which is an odd way to phrase this as there won't be quote-unquote seasons of content within Star Wars Outlaws. Now, this is a pre-order bundle for DLC. Now, that season pass includes within it the Jabba's Gambit exclusive mission, which is available at launch. Now, this tells me that they have the Jabba's Gambit questline or storyline completed, and they have decided to remove it from the base game and instead lock it behind a paywall. This is done in order to provide the illusion of immediate value. Now, this is a despicable practice that should not be met with any form of acceptance. We've all seen fairly egregious examples of this sort of thing in the past, most notably with the Mass Effect 3 Day 1 DLC for Javik, where Javik is an integral part of the Mass Effect 3 overall story of the Reapers, and to pull that content out of the game and lock it behind a paywall is extremely disingenuous, not to mention greedy and exceptionally anti-consumer in nature. In addition to paywalling content from the base game in order to simply create the perception of value for paying $40 more than what the base game costs, it offers two DLCs that will release after launch and the Kessel Runner character pack. Now, that character pack is a pack of cosmetics for Kay Vess and her little pet named Nyx. So for the Gold Edition, you ultimately have three days early access, which is FOMO bait along the lines of the old mankind divided sad attempt to get people to quote, augment your pre-order, one storyline that has been ripped from the base game in order to provide the illusion of immediate value, two DLCs likely priced at a value of $20 a piece, which is likely what the DLCs themselves will cost once they're finally created and sold, and one additional cosmetic pack, which again is typically about a current standard rate of $5. And then we have the Ultimate Edition, which is $130. $20 more than the Gold Edition and $60 more than the base game, almost twice the cost of the base game. And upgrading to that also grants you access to the Rogue Infiltrator Bundle and the Sabic Shark Bundle, which are both cosmetic packs, so $5 each or $10 together. And then you also have a digital art book, which by my count is valued and will likely be sold separately for $10, just so you can get access to some pretty pictures the dev team happen to have lying around. Now, you'll note that nowhere within the Gold or Ultimate Editions do you receive anything physical, not even a cheap poster for your purchase, let alone a pin, a badge, stickers, a mug, or anything. It's all purely digital, meaning they just had to make it once and then it is infinitely replicatable. But then they throw in Ubisoft Plus, which is where you get the same content as the Ultimate Edition of the game if you decide to buy into their subscription service for $18 a month. Now, this pricing model to me seems exceptionally greedy, cynical and most certainly anti-consumer. 
and all you really get out of any of the higher tier versions of the game is a bunch of digital cosmetics, some content they ripped out of the base game and locked behind a paywall, a pre-order for two DLCs that will likely cost the very same $20 each once those are launched, and the removal of a 72-hour penalization for not giving them as much money as they want. It's exceptionally poor value, to say the very least. And of course, they are attempting to use this to push their subscription service, but for a more budget-conscious option, if you want to play the game, there's no minimum amount of time for Ubisoft Plus subscriptions. So late August of this year, say the 24th or 25th, you could get Ubisoft Plus, pre-install the game and play it, which will include the Jabba's Gambit content. And then after you beat the game over the course of the next month, simply cancel your Ubisoft Plus subscription, which means you would be able to access the game for $18. Now, I don't personally believe that under normal circumstances Ubisoft has even earned $18 from my wallet, but as a content creator, I will likely need to play the game in order to be able to cover it. But if that weren't the case, I personally would not buy this game. It just doesn't look good to me at all. And the value Ubisoft provides is extremely minimal for the costs they are requiring. And for those that wonder, yes, Ubisoft belongs on the dirty devs list, as do EA, Bethesda, Activision, Bungie, Microsoft, although Activision already has a dirty devs video. Every major AAA deserves a spot on the dirty devs. Ubisoft is no different. I just haven't been able to do dirty devs videos on most of them because their actions are so numerous that to properly catalog them all, well, one man does not have enough hours in the day to be able to do that, at least not in a timely or responsible manner. And also in regarding to buying Star Wars Outlaws, I was reminded of the words of a certain cynical bastard of a Brit that I respected a great deal who inspired me to create this channel and whom I eventually had become to formulate the basis of a friendship with. He said, if you buy a game at launch, you're paying the most amount of money for the worst version of the game. And he was absolutely correct. And also, with a pre-order, we all know that most of this is simply to generate FOMO in order to get people to not wait for reviews, to not see what critics have to say, and to not wait to see if the game is even stable at launch. They want to get your money in any way that they can and bypass what should be a normal part of the process whenever possible, which is to wait for critics, to wait for content creators, to inspect the content and provide you with information so you will have a better and more informed idea if you even want to purchase the game. Additionally, why pay full price for a game that we all know is going to require a metric ton of patching in order to fix? Intellectually, the response is easy. You shouldn't. But FOMO and desire to get your hands on the next shiny thing? That is inherently emotional, and emotion has this nasty little habit of bypassing or overriding reason, which is what companies like Ubisoft want. So if you do fall into that category of wanting to play the game no matter what, consider for a moment the least expensive option. Getting one month of Ubisoft Plus, as much as I hate subscription services anyways, it would be by far the most economical option. Just make sure you cancel that before they get more money out of you than the base game would have cost. You have to remember to do that, to actually cancel it, because subscription services are like library cards. Once you get one, you tend to forget you have it and you end up paying a bunch of money for something you're not using. That said, if you find value in my content, I would ask that you consider liking, subscribing, and letting me know your thoughts on how Ubisoft has handled their pricing here in the comments below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.